This morning my opening text is from Corinthians and all the other points are based are, are from the book of Song of Psalms. Song of Songs. As we say, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. It is Song of Songs. Among all the songs, it is the best song. Okay. The caption for this morning meditation is Fragrance. Fragrance. If you've got a copy of the Bible, can you turn with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now thanks be unto God, which you always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. He makes manifest the savor of his knowledge, the savor of Christ's knowledge, that others could know about Christ, the knowledge of Christ. So he makes us manifest, emit, emit, the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ by us in every place, in every place where we go, in every place we stand, we emit a fragrance. What is that fragrance? Others could know about Christ, knowledge of Christ, what Christ can do, who Christ is, what Christ does in the life of a person. We can make others know more about Christ. That type of a fragrance we emit in every place. That's a Christian walk. It's not necessary we have to preach Christ. It's we have to preach Christ. But we have to make his knowledge. People should know more about Christ. That type of a fragrance we should emit. So in this morning I'm going to, we are going to consider seven types of fragrance that we should be emitting, we should manifest in our life. We must make others know that we have got that fragrance. So you've got the fragrance of sandal or the fragrance of jasmine or the fragrance of musk, uh, some fragrance you've got. It's not necessary to go and tell everybody, I got black musk, I got black musk, I got black musk. Or I got sandal, whatever the fragrance may be. It's not necessary you have to go and tell everybody that I got this fragrance, I got that fragrance. Those who are standing by your side, they know that you've got that fragrance. You've got the fragrance of jasmine, you've got the fragrance of rose or lavender, whatever that fragrance may be. You are manifesting, or today we can say emitting. You are make others know the fragrance. So like that, even without speaking out, we must be able to make certain fragrance coming out of our lifestyle. Number one, please make a note of it. This very meditation will help you. I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of references. So making note of these references and meditating on them will help you for your further study. Number one, Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Because of the savour of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. You are, it is, it's a fragrance that comes out of the bridegroom, but we also, with the bridegroom, must have that fragrance. Here it says, uh, because of the savour of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Thy name is as an ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. So the name, the very name, that should be like an ointment poured forth. It should be like a perfume. When they talk about your name, in Tamil we use two words, one is spare, 
One is Namam. Namam. Uh, in English, the word name comes from Namam. Most of the English words, they got their root in Tamil. We say send. Send is the Tamil word Chandan. Chandan. From that we get that English word send. The English word cry is from the Tamil word kare, cry. Karedal. Kareyade. Kareyade. That kareyade. Kareydal. Kaka kareyde. That karey has become cry in English. Similarly, that name, the namam, has become name in English. Name or nama means it most speaks about the character of that person. It's not just a name, pair. It's not just a pair. It is a nama. Umudhe nama mutunda parimala thaila. Your character that speaks about your name. When we talk about that boy, when we talk about that girl, when we talk about that brother, when you mention that name, that should have a fragrance. He's a good boy. She's a good girl. That sir, that madam, you're a very nice madam. Even those who don't like you, even those who don't like you, should be attracted by your name. So what do I mean that? So you are working in a college or you are working in an office. Two staff are talking. You know, yes, 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 always they say Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Lord, Katar, Katar. I don't like that part. I don't. They are always talking about Jesus. I don't like that. But however, she is a gem. He is a gem. See? I don't like that girl. She doesn't mix with us, but she's a nice girl. Pa. That na- that's a good name. He's a good neighbor. Some people, they, they don't even smile at their neighbors. They don't talk to their neighbors. They don't know who their neighbors are. Why don't you talk to your neighbor? Huh? They don't talk to me. How will they talk to you unless you talk to them? You ask your neighbor, why are you not talking to your neighbor? They will also say, they don't talk to me. Somebody has to make make that start, you make that start. You smile at them, they'll smile back. You'll say, hello sir, they'll say, hello sir. You ask, how are you, they'll ask, how are you. You talk to them. You greet them. You smile at them. My dear brother, my dear sister, a good name. You must, in the church, you must have a good name. In your office, you must have a good name. In your locality, you must have a good name. About Jesus Christ, that's a prophecy. One who is desired of all. Yella ralu virumba patta var varuvar. Yella ralu virumba patta. People may not love Christianity because of the Christians, but the whole world loves Christ. They love Christ. Even those who don't love Christianity, they love Christ. They don't want to speak against Christ. They may not believe his virgin birth. They may not believe his resurrection. They may not accept all his teachings, but they'll say he's good. His name. So the first thing I love to tell you, your very name must emit a good fragrance. Not only the name, when you say its name, daddy, mommy, son, my daddy, you is a nice daddy. He is very strict, but he is very loving. The very name Daddy, he is not a terror. He is not a devil incarnate. In Appava, Pisasudi Avadar. Pisasudi Avadar, Nenga Appa. 
So just imagine every walk of your life. Your name must emit a fragrance. Start it in your family, in your church, in your school, in your locality. There we read, the virgins love thee. What do you mean by virgins love thee? In the Bible terminology, 2 Corinthians 11, 2. Revelation 14, 4. Virgins speak about believers. In general, in Hebrew language, that word virgins speak about good people, uncorrupted people. They say it's a virgin oil. It's a, it's a pure. They love you. Good people will love you. Because your name is so good, that boy, he's a, that fellow is a rowdy fellow. He's a cheat. He's a proudest person. He's a crooked person. He's a cunning person. What are all the names we get? What is the name that you have earned? What is the name you have earned? Think for a minute. Very reserved. Very proudish. Very cheap. He's a cheater. Hypocrite. But your name should emit a very good fragrance. So the first fragrance, for others to know Christ, our very name must be able to emit a fragrance. In the church, have you got a name? What's the name by which you are known in the church? Brother, sister, especially children, your name is very, very important. Number two, this is very beautiful. Please listen carefully, then only you will understand. Songs of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6. Songs of Cho Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? So somebody is coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh, and frankincense, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powers of the merchant, with all powers, uh, powders of the merchant, with all powders of the merchant, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant. Somebody is coming out of wilderness. Somebody is coming out of wilderness. And the very coming of them is like pillars of smoke. Pillars of smoke. And when they are coming out of the wilderness, their coming is like pillars of smoke. And that person is perfumed with myrrh, frankincense, and all powders of the merchant. About the same scene we read in Songs of Solomon, verse, chapter 8, verse 5. Who is that cometh, cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? So it's not only really coming out of her wilderness. When that person is coming out of the wilderness, leaning upon the beloved. It has got many points. Every point has got many points. So I just want to give you only a reference. Here we read about a bride, a Christian. A Christian is coming out of wilderness, is coming up from a wilderness. The wilderness speaks about anything dry, uh, anything difficult. So in the wilderness there is no wheat, in the wilderness there is no barley, in the wilderness there is no pomegranates, in the wilderness there is no wine, in the wilderness there is no oil, in the wilderness there is no fig. It's a wilderness of snakes and scorpions. It's a wilderness of darkness and pits. That's not what we read in the Bible. So wilderness speaks about a place where everything is dry and drought. It's a very vast place. It 
talks about our difficult situations. We may not have grapes, we may not have wine, we may not have uh, barley or wheat. That's the wilderness. So this bride is coming out of wilderness and she's coming up. She's not only coming out, from a very lower estate she is coming up. While she is coming up, in the first place, it is described as, as a pillar of smoke she is coming out. As a pillar of smoke. And the second place it says, leaning on her beloved. Leaning on her beloved. She is coming out. Now listen carefully. The pillar of smoke, the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire, speaks about the presence of God in the Bible. So how do we have a pillar of smoke? It's all because there is fire. That fire is the love. And the love is manifested as a smoke. It's a pillar of smoke. Because there is fire, there is, apparently there is smoke. So she is coming out of that wilderness. She is coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved. It is depending on her beloved, leaning on his bosom, as John was leaning on the bosom of Jesus Christ. So in all her difficult situations, in all her negative situations, we could see this bride leaning upon her God, leaning upon her beloved. So here it speaks about the smoke, the divine presence. Now we see some boys, some girls, we could see the very presence of God in their life. Divinely, godly. They need not preach anything. They stand in a bus stop. You can make a difference between a godly person and an ungodly person. That Ramayadi in that face, that Shanti, there's no equal word for Shanti in English. That's why T.S. Eliot, when he was writing the poem, The Wasteland, he finished that poem with Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. That Ramayadi, that peace. And in Upanishad, in every thing, Om Shanti. I mean that peace, probably we don't have an equal word in English, I am afraid. That Ramayadi, the way that person is standing, in that face we could see humility, in that face we can see confidence, in that face we could see holiness, in that face we could see victory, in that face we could see godliness. Maybe a, a teacher, the students could see a divine nature. Maybe a girl, a boy. So when others could see you, you must be able to emit the fragrance of God's presence in your very life. And you may come from difficult situations. There was a young teacher in a school. At the time he was around 23 or 24. Just a young teacher. There was a difficult situation. The principal of that school, he was a very experienced principal, a celebrity. He must be in his 70s. He must be in his 70s. So this young teacher was in his early 20s. One day that principal called this teacher and asked him, called by name and said, how is that you are always keeping a cool? How is that you are always keeping a cool? That seasoned, celebrated principle 
he was 70. He was able to see in a young man a cool composture. And uh, even when I was preparing this, I don't want to mention, I'm just thinking about some boys, some girls in our church. Even when they walk, when they talk, a type of a divine presence, there's no arrogance. There is no negativity. You may be coming out of wilderness. You may be coming out of difficult situations. But people must say that in your wilderness, you are leaning on your beloved. You are depending upon your beloved. You are depending upon your God. You know that your God is with you. Like a pillar of smoke. You are coming out of, you are coming up from a wilderness. They have got two different meanings, coming out of wilderness, coming up from wilderness. So I don't have time to explain everything. Number one, your very name must give a sweet fragrance. In every fragrance I've got a mean. Here the fragrance of a myrrh, frankincense, and powders of the merchant. I don't I mean I like to explain everything, but I do believe that I need seven more weeks. Already there are a few messages hanging. The Ten Commandments of Jesus Christ. Christians live in this manner. Romans chapter 14, 15. So here, number one, the myrrh speaks about bitterness. Frankincense, it will give smell only when there is fire. Frankincense, and then the powder of the merchant, the life that is powdered, crushed. Myrrh, bitterness, frankincense can emit fragrance only when, that, when it's put in fire and powdered of the merchant, suffering, all talking about suffering, wilderness, but there is perfume. Presence of God, others could see that you are leaning upon your beloved. My dear brother, my dear sister, so number one, the fragrance of name, your very name must give a fragrance. Number two, you must be able to emit, emit the fragrance of a divine presence. Number three, turn with me to Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 10. Songs of Solomon 4 10. How fair is thy love, my sister, that bride is loving the bridegroom, and the bridegroom says, how fair is thy love, my sister. Jesus must say, how far is your love? My sister, my spouse, how much better is thy love than wine? And the smell of thine ointments than all spices. This is the fragrance of love. You love God, and when you love God, you emit the fragrance of loving God. Others must know that you love God. You may be a pastor, you may be an evangelist. The others will know, oh, he loves money, he loves name, he loves fame. He's doing ministry is because of the love for name. He wants to have big, big posters, cutouts. He wants his name to come up. He loves his name. He loves money. If I go for this program, how much I get? In this program, they give only 5,000. That program, they give 20,000. So the world will know. Very soon they will come to know. This person loves money. This person loves name. This person loves fame, etc., etc. But we must be able to emit a fragrance. So and so love God. And not only others could see that we love God, God should know that we love Him. God should know, or God should say, your love is very fair. My sister, my spouse, my son, my daughter. The Lord must be able to say, Robert, your love is very fair. Sam, your love is very fair. That's what he says. 
How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine? And the smell of thine ointments. The ointments is the ointment of love. Your love must emit a fragrance. That's what the Bible says. Love God with all your heart. Love God with all your mind. Love God with all your soul. Love God with all your strength. With all your heart. With all your mind. With all your soul. With all your strength. Love God. In Mark they say, love God with all your understanding. With all your understanding, five things, with all your understanding, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength. Love God. As you love God, love your neighbor. So you must have the fragrance of name, you must have the fragrance of divine presence, you must have the fragrance of love. We read in Romans chapter 8, I read to you from verse 35, Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God itself is Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love, whatever it may come. What, whether I get this or I don't get that. Whether sword or famine or danger, nothing would be able to separate me from the love of God. That type of a nature. That's why we read in Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verses 6 and 7, very powerful verses. Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Many waters speaks about troubles, tribulations, problems. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the flood drown it, that fire of love. Whatever the situations may come that cannot drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contempt. Whether it is persecution or pleasure, whether it is poverty or prosperity. Poverty cannot quench, persecution cannot quench this love. And prosperity will be thought contempt. My dear brother, my dear sister, do we have that love for Christ? We love fashions of the world, we love worldliness, we love prosperity, we love so many things, other things in this world. We love people. We are willing to forsake Christ for the sake of loving a person. We are willing to forsake the truth. We are willing to forsake our Christian standard, I love so and so. He may not be a believer. 
He may be a Hindu. The Bible says, don't be yoked together equally with an unbeliever. But now for me, love is more important than the Bible verse. Love is more important than the Bible verse. I will love that person. I will marry that person. So many a time, worldliness is more important. Fashions of the world is more important than love of God. Are you willing to forsake anything and everything for the sake of Christ? For that love? For me, loving Jesus is more important. Nothing would separate me from that love. Nothing would separate me from that love. The earlier commitment I have made for the Lord, till this day, with all humility for the glory of the Lord, it's the Lord's grace. Nothing is able to separate me from that love. When the Lord called me for the ministry, the worldly success was knocking at my door. I was ready to start a very big school in Ananaga. Almost every field work was done on one side. On the other side, my institution has decided to make me principal of a reputed their flag institution. When I was not very keen, my management talked to my wife. Are you willing to take up the assignment? She said, it's all his decision. But when the Lord called me, I'm not bragging about it, but when the Lord called me, I was ready to give that up. I was ready to give that up. I am not, not to brag about it, with all humility I tell you. That prosperity was contempt to me. Do you really have that type of a love? How, how are you able to emit a fragrance of love in your life. Let me move on to the fourth one. So fragrance of name, fragrance of divine presence, fragrance of love. And number three, Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 11. Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 11. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb, the bridegroom is saying. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. And the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. The smell of the garment. The smell of that garment. The fragrance of the garment. Garment speaks about our life of testimony. That's what others can see immediately. The garment gives us the identification who are who we are, the government, the police, the military, the railway guard, the uniform. They got a union in those days they got a government for a harlot, they got a government for a priest, they got a government for a leper, they got a government for a blind person. So in those days, even today, in those days very much, garments identified that person. Even today we make a lot of identifications by seeing that garment. In a wedding house we know who is the bride. So the garment, the way she dresses, we are able to say she is the bride, the garment. So garment speaks about your life of testimony. What people could see your lifestyle, your very behavior. In the Bible we read about garment of righteousness, garment of salvation, etc., etc. That's another study. 
And what are the different smells in a garment is another study. The garment of Isa. That was the garment of the field the father loved. He had a smell in his garment. It's the garment of the field that his father loved. Like that is a different smell. The smell of the blood in the garment, etc. Now I'm not getting into all those things. You are very lifestyle. You are very lifestyle. Must show that you are a Christian. And it must give a fragrance. The way you dress, the way you do your hair, the way you make up, the way you walk, the way you smile, the way you sit, the way you stand, the way, the way that you use words, that should be honey. There we read, Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Just naturally. It's not the honey that is made in a factory. It's naturally, it just drips from the honeycomb. So it's not tailor-made, factory-made words. Naturally. It's not only honey. Milk, honey and milk under your lips for taste, for nourishment. It's again another deeper study, what is honey, what is milk. When you say, praise Lord Pastor, praise Lord Sister, praise Lord Auntie, that should be honey. Maybe a small word, Okay, Uncle. Sure, Auntie. That just sure, Auntie. That could be milk and honey. You tell somebody, don't worry, God is with you. Milk and honey. Naturally drips. God will, I'll pray for you. Boys and girls, don't think it's something, a very imaginative life. The church has gone far away from all these good teachings. All prosperity, prosperity, success, success, success. Christian nature is totally lost. Christian behavior is totally lost. Your very garment must give the smell of Lebanon. Lebanon speaks about a very lofty mountain, a very lofty mountain. So your very lifestyle should be a token of heaven. How could I give the smell of Lebanon? I live in Lebanon, I walk in Lebanon, I move in Lebanon, the rich trees, the citrus fruits, you go by the Kodekanal side, the eucalyptus, the citrus, the uh, that smell, just fill in that air. So we walk in it, we stay in it, more we get that smell. More we read the word of God, more we pray, more we spend time with God, more we spend time with God's people, that smell will come in your behavior. The more you spend time with silly people, that silly people is again the word challi pasanga. Challi. Challi means, that's what in English it became silly. Challi means, in those, now we say paisa. Now even we don't see 25 paisa. 25 paisa. 25 paisa. I don't know how many of you have seen 20 paisa. A few people have seen 20 paisa. How many of you have seen 1 paisa? Only very few have ever seen one paisa. One sixth of a paisa. One paisa. You don't know how one paisa would be. One sixth of a paisa is a challi. One sixth of a paisa. One paisa is one hundredth of a rupee. Even one rupee is very difficult to see. So a challi is 600 of a rupee. 600 of a rupee, that is the value of a challi. 
சல்லி பசங்கட்டா ஒரு சல்லிக்கு பெறாதுடா ஒன் சல்லி இஸ் சிக்ஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஒன் அவுட் ஆஃப் சிக்ஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ ருபீஸ் ஒன் சல் சல்லி தட்ஸ் வாட் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் வி சை சில்லி So somebody is spending all the time with Challi Pasang. One paisa kada vada. Veen kada, vetti kada, oor kada. Apo unho valke le enna maari vasana varo. Unho vashtarath le enna maari vasana. Okay, you ask the bar. You spend time with the wise people. You spend time with the wise people. and you would be able to emit a difficult type a, 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 a sweet fragrance a sweet fragrance there are two friends they sit sit and talk with so philosophic things in their school days these two boys were sitting and talking whether capital punishment is right or wrong tappu senjanuk thooku thanna kudukalama kuduka kudada nu solli ஒன்பதாக படிக்கிற ரெண்டு பையங்க உட்காந்து பேசிகிட்டு இருக்காங்க வர ஐ மீன் இஸ் இந்த இயர் சிக்ஸ்டிஸ் சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் சிக்ஸ்டி சிக்ஸ் ஸோ தேர் தாட் லெவல் வாஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் தே ஆர் நாட் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் அ கேர்ள் தே ஆர் நாட் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் அ சினிமா டுடே இட் ஹஸ் பிகம் எ வெரி ஹாட் டாபிக் இன் த ஃபிலாசபிக் அண்ட் பொலிட்டிக்கல் அரீனா பட் நியர்லி ஃபிஃப்டி இயர்ஸ் அ கோ டு பாய் ஸ்கூல் பாய்ஸ் வர் சிட்டிங் அண்ட் டாக்கிங் எவ்ரி டே they talk about something lofty lebanon high mountain then there will be smell of lebanon on your garment so you must give the fragrance of lebanon your lifestyle must be a lofty or not a proudish one high not a high minded heavenly minded மேட்டிமையான சிந்தையில் மேலான சிந்தை மேட்டிமையான சிந்தை வேறு மேலான சிந்தை வேறு ஐம் சேங் திஸ் பிகாஸ் சம் ஆஃப் யூ கேன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் பெட்டர் வென் இட் இஸ் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் இன் டம் ஹை மைண்டட் இஸ் ராங் ஹெவன்லி மைண்டட் இஸ் ரைட் வி ஷுட் நாட் பி ஹை மைண்டட் வி ஷுட் பி லாஃப்டி மைண்டட் ஹை மைண்டட் இஸ் ராங் தட் இஸ் மேட்டிமையான சிந்தை it is not high minded it is heavenly minded parloga sindhi melana sindhi melana vegale nadunga then your government it is not necessary you must be 60 plus for that those two boys are 16 below when they were talking about it for the glory of the lord i am saying one is the director of cancer institute today and one is a pastor in different levels the lord has lifted them up it's all what your mindset is who is your dearest friend with whom you spend more time with whom you chat with whom you travel who is your close friends you very we have to very careful there are seven ways to increase our wisdom one of the ways if you want to grow in wisdom be with wise men you will increase in wisdom you will increase in wisdom so that's fragrance of life your garment smelling lebanon number 5 this is very interesting songs of solomon chapter 5 songs of solomon verse 5 i rose up to open my beloved i rose up to open to my beloved and my hands dropped with myrrh and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock little contradictory the bridegroom is coming he is coming and knocking at the door the bride says i finished all my day's work i washed my feet i got into my night garbs Now how can I come and open the door? But he says, no, it's a, uh, there is a gentle shower outside, it's uh, dripping. I am getting wet, please open the door. She says, I am tired, I am gone to bed, how could I come and open the door? But there was not a big quarrel. It, 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 it looks as if she has resigned to bed. 
He knocked and knocked at the door for some time and he went away. But by the time she pulled herself up, Sangha went to open the door. When she was opening the door, the bridegroom was not there, he's already gone. But when she was opening the door, when she was opening the door, the perfume that was dripping from her hand was in the handle of the door. It's a very beautiful passage, that's a perfume. I rose up to open to my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh. Her hands dripped with myrrh and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh. Myrrh, as I said, yeah, already, well, I pull up. That's a very bitter, that's a taste of bitterness. But a smell, a good fragrance. Taste is as bitter, but smell is a very good fragrance and it's used for as an antibacterial uh, ingredient, it's antibacterial, antifungal, got a lot of medical properties. But taste is bitter, taste is bitter. Myrrh is always used to represent something that comes out of bitterness, but that gives a good smell, that gives a good health, health healing, etc. Okay. Now, that hand speaks about the labor, the smell of her labor. She became tired and uh, she was not lazy. She labored and labored and labored to that great extent. All through the day she was laboring. Now it was she was too tired to open the door. She was too tired to open the door. Extremity of the labor. So we should not become too tired to open the door for the beloved. So it's not very positive. But her labor must be appreciated. It is not the myrrh was a dripping from her hand, but as that's what we read in English. The original, the smell that was dripping out of her hair was like the natural myrrh that dripping out of the tree. As a natural myrrh, sweet smelling myrrh that's dripping out of a tree, that type of a fresh smell, not artificial smell, Fresh smell is coming out of her hands. Hands speak about the work. The work. Garment speaks about the lifestyle. So I want to call this the fragrance of labor. How much he labored for the Lord. I just read a passage to you before I could go move on to the end. next verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And none of us is a match to this passage, but to understand the fragrance of labor. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I read from verse 3. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Somehow I want to make sure that the ministry is not blamed. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves, as the ministers of God. In all things, we want to approve ourselves as the ministers of God. How? In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in distresses, in stripes, uh, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceiver and yet true as unknown and yet well known, as dying 
and behold will live as chastened and not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things approving us as ministers of god we show ourselves as minister of god in another place he says in beating in lashing in shipwreck all difficult situations the way we have labored for the lord that should make our hands drip with myrrh sweet myrrh sweet smelling myrrh sweet smelling myrrh the taste may not be sweet it's a bitter taste but the smell is taste sweet so our very name must give a fragrance and divine presence must be a fragrance in us our lifestyle must be a fragrance here we see the fragrance of labor the fragrance of labor and number 6 we'll go to songs of solomon chapter 8 songs of solomon chapter 7 verse 7 and 8 this is the stature this thy stature is like to a palm tree the stature of the bride is like a palm tree and thy breast to clusters of grapes i said i'll go up to the palm tree i will take hold of the boughs thereof now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the wine and the smell of thy nose like apples now the uh bride has become very tall in the sight of the bridegroom in tamil in english we read thy stature is like to a palm tree in tamil it's beautiful un vera pane pol irukirathu un vera the child of god must have such a high life not a high minded life not a dwarfed christian walk the when the lord blesses you when i get tired of நீரியாததுமான பெரிய காரியங்களை செய் த லார்ட் வில் மேக் யூ யுவர் ஸ்டேச்சர் லைக் அ பாம் ட்ரீ நாட் அ டுவாஃப்ட் ட்ரீ யுவர் ஸ்டேச்சர் இன் யுவர் பிஸ்னஸ் இன் யுவர் ஸ்டடீஸ் இன் யுவர் ஒகேஷன் யுவர் ஸ்டேச்சர் யுவர் ப்ரொஃபைல் வில் பி லைக் அ பாம் ட்ரீ and in verse where eight the psalm uh, the bridegroom says i will go up to the palm tree i will take hold of the boughs thereof so the lord says i'll go up to the palm tree i'll climb pane mel yeri so when god comes closer he is able to smell the breath of that bride smell the breath of that bride if there is any deep inner sickness especially septic the very breath will start smelling bad the very breath will start smelling bad it's a very bad condition now here the breath is smelling sweet like apple breath speaks about the very jeevan the very life inside the very moochi inside is something that is pleasant to god so not only your name not only how you love god 
not only were government, not only were hands, you were very moochy. Must be the smell of an apple to God. When God could come closer to you, when God could smell you at Muchi, the very inner person, the very inner person, say, the Lord comes closer to me. He sees my breath. He sees my breath. He smells my breath. Now he preaches. He says, because it's his duty, he preaches. Because he wants to please people, so that more people could come, more money could come. What's the purpose with which he is preaching? What is the breath? Is it for the blessing of the people? The people should have a good, successful Christian living. They should be prepared to meet the Lord in the air. What is the breath? What is the smell of the breath? What a deep study it is. The Lord should see the smell of your breath. I don't know how many of you can understand this. I don't know how many of you would love to be a match to this. If the cap fits, hat fits, take it on. If you are a person who has got the desire that your very breath must be pleasing to the Lord. The very jivan a very moochie, that should smell an apple. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. So finally, a very important thing I'm going to tell you. Songs of Solomon chapter 7 verse 13. Songs of Solomon chapter 7 verse 13. The mandrakes, of that I love to use the word, the dudai. The dudai. Give us smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which are laid up for thee, O my beloved. It has got a very deeper meaning. So now you have got a smell. With all holiness, with all holiness, I love to speak about that smell. The smell of Dudai. The smell of Dudai. And if you go to chapter 1, she starts with this. Let my beloved kiss me with the kisses of his lips. Let the beloved kisses me. Uh, kiss me with the kisses of his lips. Her very desire was to have the union of the essence and the substance. The union of the bride and the bridegroom. The sangamam of the river in the sea. No more they are twine, but one. She wants to become one flesh with the beloved. The, crea the creator becomes one with the creator. The Atma is becoming one with the Paramatma. That is the beauty of this uh, song of songs. Essence is becoming one with the substance. That is why When they are made husband and wife, no more they are twine, but one. For that cause he will separate himself from his father and mother and be one with his wife. And Paul says, this is a mystery. I talk about Christ and the church. We are the blood of his blood. We are the flesh of his flesh. We are the bone of his bone. We are lost in him. Why do I say this? This fruit, Dudai, 
In English it is translated mandrakes. But exactly they don't know what that fruit is. We have got in Genesis chapter 30 about this fruit. There's a small discussion between Rachel and Lehi about that fruit. Rachel wanted that fruit, etc. Dudai. And some people say it's an apple. We don't know exactly what that fruit was. It is translated as mandrake. But the word used there is dudai. And in the same verse, uh, in verse 13, the, the dudai give a smell. It starts, the dudai give a smell. And yet, which I have laid up from thee, O my beloved. O my beloved, that word beloved is also dudi. Dudi. So dudai means love fruit. A love fruit. The literal meaning is love fruit. But many commentators agree on this. This love fruit, why is it called a particular fruit that is able to excite a, a sex desire between husband and wife? A fruit that could excite the husband to be one with the wife. Husband to be one with the wife. The union of substance and essence. Husband and wife. It is a fruit that attracts God to us. His love on the cross attracted us to him. There's no beauty in him, there's no comeliness in him. I love to show you one verse, it's very powerful. Songs of Solomon 5.13. If you've got a copy of the Bible, you must turn with me. Songs of Solomon 5.13. It talks about his cheeks. I focused on the fragrance of the beloved. Here we see the fragrance of the bridegroom. Songs of Solomon 5.13. His cheeks are as a bed of spices. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His, lip, his lips like lilies, dropping sweet smelling myrrh. His face, his cheeks. His, behold his face. His visage was so marred. There's no beauty, there's no comeliness. Blood and spit mixed together. Beard plucked. With a crown of thorns as a diadem on his head. When we look up to him, we turned our faces. But for the bride, that was the attraction. It is the cross that has attracted us to him. It is his sacrifice. His cheeks. His cheeks with spit and blood. For us that is the bed of sweet spices. Bed of sweet spices. That face attracted him. Attracted us to him. We ran before him, ran behind him. Now our very life attracts him to us. That is possible when we make an absolute surrender. That's how it, it finishes. In chapter 7 verse 10, before that he says, I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. I make an absolute surrender. The fragrance of surrender. The fragrance of surrender. 
that attracts him to me. With all holiness I explain. With all holiness I explain. It is the will of God that Jesus should be born through Mary. Mary was probably at that time 13 or 15. All Bible scholars accept she must be less than 18. She knew no man. It's not proper for her to be conceived without marriage. She's already exposed to Joseph. If she is found with a child even before marriage, the only punishment is to be stoned. She should be stoned to death. She knew very well. She was an intelligent girl. She knew very well what would happen. Against all odds, against all odds, she made a surrender. Let it be according to his will according to his word. I am his handmaid. Let it be according to his word. I am his handmaid. She made an absolute surrender. Holy Ghost came upon her. It is born of her was holy. Christ was formed in her. You make an absolute surrender in your life. God will be attracted towards you. Make an absolute surrender against all odds. You will be misunderstood. You will be spoken bad. Two thousand years people speak bad about her. Others may not believe. You can't compel the whole world for all these two thousand years to believe her. If you can make an absolute surrender, his desire will be upon you. There's the fruit of Dudai. There's the fragrance of Dudai. The, the word Dudai means boiler. The boiler. There's a beautiful Tamil poem, poem song, Umpadam Paninde. In that because of me, God's heart must be boiling, bubbling. Can we have a life like that? When they, God could think about Emil, his heart should be boiling with love. Just think about your name. Girls put your name there. When God would think about you, Will he be boiling, bubbling, to be attracted towards you? You are attracted towards him. He is attracted towards us. When we make an absolute surrender against all odds, he will be attracted towards us. So we must have a life, a life of emitting fragrance. Fragrance, your very name must give a fragrance. Divine presence in your life, in your talk, in your walk, in the way that you stand, as I told you, I could see that as a picture, you're standing just in a bus stand. Your divine presence must be around you. I love to close this with the testimony of our dear sister, Masara Navaroji. Some of you might have seen Sister Sara Navaraji. And some of you might have been associated with her. I had the privilege to be associated with her. Some of you would have heard her ministry. Now at least some of you might have heard her songs or seen in the maybe very, uh, very limited TV programs towards the fag end of her life. Uh, she used to be very fair, with a fair complexion. When I was seeing her, must be in her late 40s or 50s. She got saved when she was 18 years old. 
when she was 18 years old. And every day, she used to carry some tracks. She would be praying that there should be more. She was working in the MES. Uh, today we call that TNEB, Electricity Board. Earlier it was uh, Madras Electricity Station, MES, they say MES. So she was working with the MES, 18 year old girl. In a worldly sense, I'm saying, please excuse me, the fair complexion. Anger. Every day she would go to the bus stand. She would be praying there should be a good crowd in the bus stand. Because then only she could give more tracks. She could give more tracks. So she preferred there should be a big crowd in the bus stand. And she would give the tracks. And they all will be standing in a queue and she'll go and stand at the end of the queue. And she was working in that office. She said, not one day, not one day, any boy or any colleague, anybody working in the office or anybody in the bus stand, not one day misbehaved with her. Not anything unto her. She said, it is not with the boys, it's with the girls. Sisters, girls, please excuse me, I'm just giving the testimony of the sister. For that she always gives. She rose like a lion when she preaches. ஒரு <laughs> நீ நெருப்பா இல்லைன்னா எல்லா ஈயும் மேலே வந்து உட்காரும் நீ அசுத்தமாக இருந்தேன்னா எல்லா ஈயும் உன் மேலே தான் வந்து உட்காரும் இட்ஸ் ஆல் பிகாஸ் வெதர் யூ ஆர் நெருப்பு ஆர் யூ ஆர் அசுத்தம் நீ அசுத்தனா எல்லா ஈயும் வந்து உட்காரும் நீ நெருப்பாக இருந்தேன்னா கிட்ட வராது வந்தால் போசிங்கிடும் நீ நெருப்பா அசுத்தமாக நீ டிசைட் பண்ணிக்கோ எ டிவைன் ப்ரெசன்ஸ் இன் யூ I know it's a very deep message, but I have, with the grace of God, the grace God has given me, I have brought it, uh, I, I, I'm sure that I have brought it to a level that you can understand with a lot of other illustrations. And in all these things, finally, a fragrant that could attract God towards you. A fragrant that could attract God towards you. Attract to an extent, God to have a union with you. God to be one with you. God desiring to be one with you. That you become one with God. No more we are twain but one. It's a mystery concerning Christ and the church. Shall we close our eyes? Very sincerely pray that you and I must have this fragrance in our life. Shall we just stand to our feet for a minute? It's not that I want to have a usual prayer, but sincerely those who desire that you want to manifest, you want to emit a sweet fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in your life, a life of fragrance. Those who sincerely desire to pray, I don't want to take a survey who all are praying, but I'm also keeping my eyes closed. Those who want to pray sincerely, Take a few seconds, put your left hand on your chest, slip your right hand towards heaven and pray to God. God, give me this life of fragrance. Hallelujah. Your name should be fragrant. I'm just praying to God. I want that life. 
Urashana. You pray to God. Girls pray to God. Boys pray to God. A life of fragrance. Your name itself is a fragrance. A divine fragrance in your love. Your love must be a fragrance. The, love, the way that you love Christ must emit a fragrance around you. Ne Christu e ne sikra ne samun ne suttil or vasa ne visano. Hallelujah. Rabana mar rabana rabana mar rabana rabasha na mar rabana. One day kriya kal. Your labor must be a fragrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A very garden must be a fragrance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The way you submit your life to Christ, the absolute surrender, a surrender against all odds. Yalla vibari thetin mati le yandavre amre sitta nereveratu nyopu kodi karavare. Adu or fragrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabana mar. That's the fragrance that attracts Jesus towards you. Hallelujah. Rabana mar. Rabhar Rabana mar. Rabashaka. Lord, I humble myself. I pray for myself and I pray for the church. Give us a life, a life that emits fragrance, the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in all places, O oh Lord. Bless your people, especially I pray for the boys and the girls. And also I pray for sisters and brothers, O oh Lord. That in every place, every place, O oh Lord, help them manifest the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in their lives. In their name, by exhibiting a divine presence in their life, the way they manifest their love towards you, their labor, their very lifestyle. Dear Father God, the very breath to our Lord, the very breath of our nostrils, Emit a fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in our life, O Lord. Even in the midst of all sufferings, in our wilderness, when we are coming out of our wilderness, when, in, when we are coming up from our wilderness, let our life be a pillar of smoke. Exhibit your presence, O Lord. Help the world see that we are leaning upon you, O Master God. Thank you for the message that you have sent to your people. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray.